Perco has been very attentive to what we needed. They've been, sales guys are good, the support's fantastic. Um, we've had absolutely no problems at all. They've, they've, they've understood our needs, they've understood what we needed. Um, and I think they've served us very, very well, very well indeed. Brian, thank you for the invitation here today to Tool in 2000. You're nestled right in the centre of Birmingham, aren't you? Is that an advantage to you? Uh, yes, certainly. Maybe a disadvantage with the traffic some nights, but everybody can find us. Yeah, so when you're shipping product around, you have to leave at a certain time to no, make sure you don't get all, caught on the very, A38. Very, very close to the motorways, literally five minutes down the road, so we have no problems. No problems at all. Okay, tell us about your company. Tell us what you do, because it's so, quite impressive. Yeah, it's all in 2000. Originally started about 50 years ago. Uh, 1996, we concentrated on press tool manufacture, and that's what we've been doing ever since, making press tools for the automotive industry. And they're not small ones, are they? No, up to four metres. That's what we like. Um, and the bigger, the better. Now, it's not, it's not just the press tools that you make. I mean, we can hear in the background, which is great, real yeah. time. You're actually doing every part of the process. Can we'll, you describe? We'll make the press tools, we'll design, manufacture, we'll try them out. We've got a four metre bed press that we can try. Um, and we can also laser cut the parts. Okay, now who are you doing work for? What's the main industries? The big ones, JLR, uh, Jaguar Land Rover. They're our, our sort of main customer. Um, we do a lot of work for Nissan, uh, Rolls Royce, Bentley. Um, but now we're trying to move away from the automotive and try and do a bit more renewable energy. Now, it's a massive investment here in the past couple of years. Walk us through that journey and the reasons behind it. We've invested £1.8 million over the last two years across the whole business, not just, not just in the machining. Um, we felt every part of the business needed some investment, some money putting into it. So we've brought new machinery, we've invested a lot in people, in training, um, and just generally tied in the factory up wherever we could to make it ready for when things really started moving. Well, you've done this in quite troublesome times as well, haven't you, in difficult, in a difficult period. Some may say that, that, that that's, a, that's a risk that but is it, could have been too much of a risk. Is it a risk that's best taken now? So when the industry does take off, we're ready, we can go. We've got the machinery, we've got the people. There's nothing stopping us. Talk to us about Herco's here, Herco. Brian. This is, the, this is the big one for me. I know four machines here, four new machines, including the turn-in centre. Our biggest area where we hadn't invested was in the machinery. The machines we had were old, they were showing their age, they were becoming unreliable. Um, we went to market, we needed, the problem is we needed, for the example this one, we needed a big machine, we needed a four metre bed. Now there's not that many machines that offer that sort of, sort of size. So we, we looked, we went to market, we searched everywhere, and Herco just came out, after visiting Herco, it just came out as the right choice. Um, from speaking to the operators, it was their, their choice. Um, they liked the controls, they felt it was very flexible. And what's the challenges you face though with not just buying a machine like this, but making parts, making big components on machines like this? You know, is it, it, it chasing yeah. tight tolerances, metal removal rates, profile? What are the things you the have biggest, to cater for? The biggest thing we need to allow for when making big parts, big tooling, is being able to move them. Now, we've got the crane dish, we've got 25 ton cranes, we can move stuff no problem. These machines have got absolutely excellent scrap removal. So any swarf we make, we don't worry about it. It just comes straight out the back of the machine into the bins and not a concern. And as far as tolerance is concerned, Herco seems to be really good. The software is good. You can't make a mistake on a part as big as some of the ones you're doing. If That'd be you very do, expensive. Yeah, if you do, it's very costly. The software is very intuitive and it does help the operators make sure that they don't make mistakes. Okay, then we go from that to five axis as well. There's a, there's a bit of a transition. Yeah. So you've got a five axis two and a smaller VMC. Five axis for us was a step into the unknown. We've never done five axis. It was on the wish list. I think the thing was, we were getting asked more and more to produce complex parts. Complex parts that only could be produced on a five axis machine. As I said, it was a, a dip in, in, in the water for five axis because we'd never done it. So we needed to know we'd be supported properly going into that field. So naturally, buying, a, per, buying a, a machine of that expense, you need to do your homework. You need to make sure it's going to be reliable and give you many years of worth of service. Future for the company? What's your plans? What's your aims? Uh, more machinery, more people. Um, ultimately, a bigger, a bigger factory. Um, but yeah, just try and keep, keep on growing. Keep on growing.